Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I think I want to give you guys the last character for my Grim Dawn playthrough that I'll be doing. After this, I'm probably going to stop with the Grim Dawn content and move over to uh, Median XL that's coming out again on Friday. It's pretty cool because they're doing a big Necromancer rework to the summons. So I'm excited to check that out. Now, this character that I'm going to show you was originally the Infiltrator, I think, that I showed on the previous video. Tried a lot of work with getting the infiltrator working, spent about, you know, 15 hours theory crafting, respecting the character, doing it again, respecting the character. And basically, I kind of came to the conclusion that I don't really like two-handed weapons in Grim Dawn. And a short introduction as to why is, since you can only really get your crit rate in Grim Dawn to like 30, 35%, it just feels really inconsistent when you're using a skill with a four second cooldown and you're trying to crit every hit. You're critting an average of like every 12 seconds, which is just not very consistent for, you know, applying things in procs. So after a lot of respecting, we ended up moving on to dual wield and we're basically using the Belgothian set. So to get this to get this build working at the potential I'm at, you're going to need the four piece Belgothian. So that's Belgothian mask, Belgothian armor, Belgothian shoulder guard and Belgothian slicer. Uh, as for our offhand weapon, we're using a blue, uh, it's mythical notch of a thousand deaths. The main reason for it, flat piercing, crit damage, uh, damage to humans, 83 cunning, and then it's notch. Notch basically is a huge proc if you see, it's 350% main hand, offhand, and crit damage. Uh, now to go over the skills and stuff, this is now a blade master. Uh, I did indeed use Grim Dawn Stash to respect my offhand, or off class. I don't really recommend doing stuff like that, but like I said, since this is the last character I wanted to play, it was either I stopped and it was done, or I continued the character with what I'm doing now. So that's what we're doing. Uh, so we're playing Soldier. We get Markovian's Advantage for the DA Shred. Um, we get Fighting Spirit because it's a huge buff. Uh, it gives great offensive ability, which is really nice. I've just got like one or two points in military conditioning. I've got Field Command for the OA and DA and Armor. Uh, going into squad tactics until it stops giving us 1% attack speed per point. Um, I just have one point in decorated soldier. You're going to have to kind of spec differently depending on, you know, where you're at with your character. I definitely want to put more points in scars of battle because it gives the reduced stun and freeze duration, which we really need right now. And the armor absorption is actually really good. I just have one point in counter strike, not for any specific reason. Uh, it's, I just like having buffs. And then basically max Ulreon rage. Um, Ulreon's Rage is cool because it gives 13% OA, it gives movement speed, uh, and it gives 165% uh, pierce. I wanted to use Bulwark because it gives damage absorption, flat fizz, and increased healing, which is really good, but you'd have to use a shield, and that would kind of just ruin the whole build. So then going over to Nightblade, where a lot of the action really comes in, uh, you're going to be maxing Dual Blades because it gives great buffs, mainly also the, the physical resistance on it. I only put like one or two points in the Belgothian Shears because I think it's mainly for the sustain. No points in Hidden Hand because it will convert your damage to Acid. Uh, quick Cut because it's one of your main single targets, I believe. Uh, didn't get Whirling Death. Remember that if you have too much procs, you're not going to consistently proc. So if you look here, this is 25% chance to be used. So 25, 20, 20, and 20. And then Notch is 10%. So that's kind of why I didn't really get like Whirling Death. Uh, anyway, Quick Cut hits three times, which makes it really good. Execution is a godly uh, attack that does an insane amount of damage as well. I've got one point in Ring of Steel, mainly just for the Circle of Slaughter, which reduces or basically gives them a chance to fumble their attack. I've got one point in Shadow Strike and one point in Nightfall. Uh, Nightfall because it basically just makes it so your uh, Shadow Strike becomes AoE and you can like basically one hit all trash mobs with uh, like the Nightfall on it. I've got Pneumatic Burst. I haven't really put many points into this right now. Um, you can definitely put more points into it. The total speed is great for attack speed. Um, I mainly went into Shadow Dance for the Evasion, and uh, Elemental Awakening is something we will get for free naturally by just putting one point in because of the plus to Nightblade. This is good because of the Elemental Resistance, since Resistance is kind of a big issue with my character right now. Uh, Veil, because it reduces their OA and total speed. Reducing their total speed means, you know, like less hits per second, meaning you're not going to take as much spike damage. Unfortunately, in Grimdon, a lot of things shotgun, so it doesn't really help against that, except for the minus OA. Knight's Chill, because it minuses their Pierce Res. I've got a few points in the Phantasmal Armor. I do want to remove it and go back to a one-pointer, but I just haven't done that yet. Uh, Anatomy of Murder, I only have like two or three points in because the damage to humans is a fat multiplier and that 10% cunning gives us a little bit of OA and that pretty much is the character. 
Once you get your full Balgothian set, you will have an auto attack replacer called Balgothian Strikes. If you want to level with Cadence first, there's nothing wrong with that, but I did end up dropping it for the Balgothian Strikes. Also, for my metal, we are using, uh, we are basically using uh, da -da -da -da, Glyph of Sudden Strikes, which is on our three, and our two is Shadow Strike. Seven is a one point blade barrier, which makes us invulnerable. Uh, and then I'm just gonna kind of hover over my gear for you really fast and scroll down so you can kind of see what everything has on it. This character is a huge work in progress and I know it may seem like it has a lot of purples, but I haven't really spent that much time on the character. The resistances are not very good. Um, I do need to craft a Serenity Relic, which will basically like almost cap my Aether and Chaos res, and then with component, or sorry, with proper augments, I can cap my Vitality res. I just haven't really gotten to that point in the character yet, and I don't think I will, which is why I'm making this video for you guys. This is something that definitely needs to get upgraded too. All right, with that being said, the, uh, Stat distribution has been majority physique, a bit of cunning, and spirit for gear requirements. And for our devotions, uh, this is what we're looking at. We've got Olrion, we've got Unknown Soldier, and Olzod. We also have uh, Azraka the Eternal Sands, Obelisk Watcher, or sorry, Solom Watcher, Panther, uh, Blades of Nadan, Assassin's Blade. We didn't have Blades of Nadan previously because we didn't need the armor pen, but now that we don't have full armor pen, this helps quite a bit. And there's not really too much you can do in terms of respecking if you're trying to like get more because this already gets four big clusters and that's pretty heavy on the points themselves. That being said, let's go ahead and get the character started. So this guy is progressing in ultimate right now. We are currently over in uh, Ashes of Malmoth, progressing through the Lone Watch. Is that what it's called? Yeah. And I'll show you guys how much damage it does. The damage is actually pretty disgusting considering like I don't even have like real weapon augments yet and there's just like so much to do right like I haven't even farmed on the character I just have the Belgothian set and that's pretty much like about it Belgothian set and notch and almost everything else can most likely get upgraded now this is a really bad area to show you guys because the character is gonna take a ton of damage since the mobs do like aether and vitality and chaos and those are my three lowest resistances the AoE clear on the character is not the best, but I found it to be better than the previous guy. Um, if you do want some more AoE, consider putting Seal of Blades components in your weapons. They will give you good life leech, decent damage, and they will also give you the Seal of Blades aura. I personally am just going to try to scale the attack speed higher, because the more attack speed, the faster you hit. The faster you hit, the more you proc, and it feels like the damage is already really good on the character. Um, and because some of the procs are AoE, it just feels really nice. I did also want to get Zolhan's technique, but I avoided, I kind of decided against it because I have too many procs, but the reason why I wanted Zolhan's is because it reduces their attack speed. Uh, reducing target's attack speed is really good, but I, I've kind of come to the conclusion that, um, like, reducing the target's attack speed is great, but there's just so many, like, one-hit skills that a lot of bosses do, or, like, these telegraphed skills that just destroy your character that you have to move out of, so it's not like reducing their attack is, is really the best thing. Trying to find some like hero mobs or some elites to like smack, but can't really seem to find any. If I can't find anything, I'll just go to Cronley's area and you can see it against Cronley's stuff. One thing to note is these living shadows are very, very nice and they're one of the main areas of survivability for the build. Oh, here's a rare guy. Am I, like, not hitting him? This is, like, the slowest kill I've ever done in my entire life on this guy. Um, the cool thing about the Living Shadows, though, is when you have a couple of them out, when you hit your Invulnerability, your Living Shadows are still going to attack. So if I hit my Invon now, you'll see they just healed me to full HP, which is really, really convenient because it basically turns your, your Invon into a full heal. And you have Pneumatic Burst for a heal, and you have Life Leech.
Uh, also, right now, the DA is like 2700 and our OA is 2770. That's actually pretty decent. Uh, I would like to try to get like maybe 3k, 3.1k OA on this character since we do shred targets defensive ability with Markovians. Um, I'm not really sure I want to get much more DA right now. Uh, people really do praise defensive ability in this game, but I'll tell you, and I'll tell you again because I say this all the time, getting your resistances capped is 11,749 times more important than getting your DA up. Because even though DA is the chances of you getting hit and the chances of you taking a crit, if you don't have resistance, it's like every single hit on you is a crit because you don't have the resist for it. And then if you get crit on top of that, sure, you're probably going to die. But if you mitigated it in the first place with proper resistances, you wouldn't have to be scared of getting crit unless it's like a big fat boss hit or something. So for new players, always recommend capping your resistances before trying to get more DA. And if you don't understand or like you're confused and you feel like no matter what you do, you can't get the resistances you need, I recommend stacking HP as much as you can because stacking HP is kind of like mitigating all damage by gaining more HP. It's not, okay, I don't know what the fuck that, that was. It's not the best thing to do by any means, but it is it is something that will carry you until you understand defensive abilities like better, right? Like stacking HP will not allow you to face tank unless you're playing like a vidcaster. However, it will allow you to not get one shot, which will allow you to learn what is doing a lot of damage, so then you can kind of understand how to build your character. Uh, okay. So I can't stand on anything Aether because I'm gonna die from it. <laughs> of course, that guy's name is literally the Aether Flame. Okay. Pop. So, just to show you guys something funny because of the bonus damage to humans, I'd like to show you this in Cronleys. Uh, since they're all humanoids here and our notch gives us bonus damage to humans and I have like three points in well actually like one or two points in anatomy of murder which is bonus damage to humans or did I already clear this? Never mind I already cleared this just kidding. Jesk you know what I'm gonna actually remake it just to show you because it feels really good to beat up Cronley. I don't know what it is about it it just makes me very happy to get like a like a 500k execution. Two, three, five, six, seven, eight. We're also still using a, a Guile Relic. So that's one thing that's nice is you don't really need like... I mean, a good Relic definitely is huge because I feel like with a, with a build like this, you don't really need to build for more damage unless you're stacking crit damage. It's much better to get like... Just like basically capping your resistances, right? Like with any build and uh, getting like the huge bonus from Serenity. Serenity looks like a real nice Relic to use. Crownly, where you at, buddy? Blades of Nadonis plus damage to humans, too. Is it? Uh, no, I don't think so. Might be the assassin right next to it, actually. Uh, yeah, that one's 15% damage to humans. Color mod's called Rainbow. Use the command post right up here and you can see everything. That skill's not ready. One thing that's really nice too is, if you notice, uh, I have Blind Fury. I don't really like having Devotion set to my procs like this, but Blind Fury is basically. Uh, let me see. I'm gonna I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna put Blind Fury on my Belgothian Strike so you guys can see what this looks like. And I'll put this on like Markovians. Definitely not really what I should be doing, but I just want to show you guys what this looks like. So you're gonna notice like this Ring of Steel proc around me. That that one right there, the orange looking one, right? So that orange Ring of Steel. 
is th this is what I didn't like about the two-handed build, right? If you guys looked at the previous character I had, it was around Blades of Nadon, which or I don't even know what it's called. Something of Nadon was the weapon, and it makes it it makes like a like a six-meter ring of steel, but ring of steel has like a four-second cooldown. By literally getting by getting that uh, devotion, I have ring of steel literally every two seconds. Like every two seconds, a ring of steel procs, right? Like you, there's a ring of steel there, but if I crit this guy, well, there's no one else to do it on. So, um, so that's kind of one thing that sucks. Is I noticed that if a skill has a long cooldown, maybe instead it's much better to build around a devotion. And then this guy, we're gonna have to wait for his shield because we can't hurt him with the shield on. And it should be off. Three, two, one. There it is. Yep, anyway though, that's pretty much the character. Um, like I said, I kind of talked about what I would kind of want to change uh, with the build. Basically, cap my resistances. Um, one thing about the build is it actually is really nice in terms of like, if I had the gear to face tank, because I've got the, I've got 29% dodge and 32% fizz resist before using two seals of might, which would actually put us at 40% physical resist with a life leech build, which is really, really nice. So I could see this build getting like 13 to 15k HP, maybe not 15, they're probably like 13 to 14k HP. Um, and I think with that plus the capped res, it would make this build be able to face tank most stuff. So anyway, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Remember, uh, you can also catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. And I hope to see you guys for the median XL patch on Friday. I'll be checking out the new Necromancer skill tree and minions. Take care. Have a wonderful time. I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Mini K also says goodbye. Mini K? Psst, psst. Say goodbye, buddy. Sorry, Mini K is a little, he's a little jaded. He's not very happy right now.